In this video, I'm playing backgammon versus a bot again with my good friend John Giorgio. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below, what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. My book, Backgammon Backgame Strategies, is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address is in the description. Uh, in this video, again, it's my great pleasure to have my good friend, John Giorgio. Thank you for joining me. Welcome. Hi, Alex. Thanks for having me again. My I enjoy friend. being on your channel. Yeah, it's, it's always fun. Uh, I, I think it's a lot of fun uh, having you on and playing uh, because uh, it's good interaction. We get to chat. Um, and I learn a lot. And uh, your uh, time, <laughs> your time with the time zone difference, your schedule matches mine. So uh, thank you for being accommodating. Appreciate it. Yeah, you're very welcome. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit of a night owl, so it works well with your schedule, doesn't good, it? Good, good, good. And uh, we were just mentioning the uh, stream champs that uh, you've been participating in. How is that going? It was going very well until I had a match with Nick Blazer. And um, he edged me. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. I'm I'm one I'm one uh, one win one loss. Okay. But it, it's still it's still heaps of fun, and it's it's enjoyable watching everyone else's matches as well, not just mine. Um, so like an interesting position came up in my match with Nick, and it was really uh, refreshing to hear him talk about it from his side. Um, obviously, I was the other side. It, it just it made for good viewing and interesting conversation. Yes, it's very entertaining. I think um, video is a real, really good way for uh, us to promote backgammon because people can watch it. And I wanted to thank you and all of the others, uh, James and Dennis and everyone involved for uh, everything you do. So we appreciate it. Yeah, no, it's it's good fun, and we're all doing it because we love backgammon, and we yeah. we want to promote it. So yeah, it's it's good. Yeah, you can also start watching and come back to it because it's there. It's like reading a book; you can put it down and pick it up. It's right. good. Right, right, good. Um, okay, wonderful. So this time we decided to play a five-point match. I usually mm -hmm. keep it to a three-point match uh, just because yeah. of my time, but. Today I have more time, so uh, we're, we're going to do a five-point match. Um, are you able to see the screen? Perfectly. Thank you very much. Great. My pleasure. We're playing on a beautiful Jeffrey Parker board. You're playing the blue checkers at the top, XG, the white checkers at the – I'm sorry, blue checkers at the bottom, of XG, the white checkers at the top. It's a five-point match. This skin is made by Rain. He makes the beautiful skins. I know you have some of them. There's a link in the description. Uh, of course, the – you're welcome to consult, and I feel like that's always the most enjoyable part, and then we'll analyze it. Um, so of course. let's start with a 4-1. How do you like to play um, the 4-1? We've had this position in one of our previous matches. Oh, yeah. Um, so 24-20 and 6-5. Okay. So what was this? I, were we discussing this with Tim Cross, or who was it? What were we discussing? Or by ourselves? Uh, I think we discussed it, you and me, because I liked this play, but I thought XG wouldn't. And you helped me to say, no, XG likes this play as well. Um, I don't know that XG likes this one. I think XG, like, the XG play is this, and then the second play would be this. The issue with this is that, you know, there's this proverb, they say, don't slot while split, because now you're giving multiple different good numbers um, to the opponent, like ones and threes hit here and fours hit here. Imagine a double four, one, two, three, four, puts all three in the air, uh, and then you're kind of toast. Uh, but we can do whatever you want. You're the guest, of course. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I, I want to play that one because okay. The the hope is we'll make either the 20 or the 5, which will both be advantageous for different reasons. So, Okay. okay. Yeah. We're not going for the PR today, then. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. 6-4. All right. So now 3-1. Okay. That's not good at all. Okay. All right. 
let's let's come in with the 20 20 no let's come in on the 24 and then let's play 13 to 10. what was the other option you were thinking of i was going to come in on the 22 point with the three and then i was going to slot my five point again with the one but I don't see the advantage of having too many open checkers in my opponent's home board because it gives them more opportunity to point on me. Right. Uh, one of the, the other thing was to just come in and continue. Uh, there are a couple of things. In the starting position, you have five checkers on the six point. Uh, there's much more of an urgency to unstack a point with five checkers than four checkers. So in this case, it's not that urgent to unstack this. The other benefit of this, I learned this from John O'Hagan one time. Uh, he kind of reinforced it. When you have two uh, potential anchors slotted, um, if the opponent rolls a 3-1, you have a chance to roll a 4 to make that anchor. Or if he rolls a 4-2 and hits here, you have a chance to roll a 5 or something else to make an anchor. So when you have two potential anchors slotted, it's easier to make an advanced anchor if you're hit. Uh, additionally, like the threes and the fours are um, somewhat duplicated. When you have here, you have good numbers like four, three, and five, four that are good. And what else? Three, three, two. Hmm. I don't know. I think, I feel like it may duplicate some numbers, but this one, you like this one, right? This one down here? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I do. To me, I'm much more comfortable to play on from this position. Yeah, it does unstack the midpoint, so it gives you a little bit more firepower here. Yeah. The other thing that's, that's a little bit of a disadvantage is that... Um, since these checkers are two apart, whereas and these checkers are also two apart, some rolls like 3-1 and 5-3 are duplicated in that sense because you can make the 7-point um, or the 5-point. But you've got extra numbers like 5-1 and 6-3. Right, right, exactly. And 6-2 can make this number. So a little bit. But 6-3 is also duplicated if this blot were still here. So we'll see. Okay, so that was good. Let's see. Double one, uh-oh. Okay. All right. That's fine. It's fine. fine. Okay. Four three is good. Yeah. This time, because the the landscape has changed, and our opponents ahead of us and with structure, I think this means that we have to prioritize a good anchor. So I would argue that making the four points is now the right move. Right. The whites four point are twenty one point. Yes. Yeah. The other option would to be to make this 10 point, but when you have a chance to make this anchor, it's really good. I think so, because we'll stop our opponent potentially making that point and having a very nice four prime. Right. And I feel like this is, is a really good lesson. When the opponent is starting to prime you, if you have the anchor, the highest anchor available, it just makes things very difficult. One of the things I learned is, of course, an opening 3-1 is stronger than an opening 4-2, but you know, I never really thought about the reason why, and it's it's like a lot stronger. And the reason is, is because when you roll a 4-2, the opponent would be able to possibly anchor ahead of that, so that second point would not be as valuable. But when you roll a 3-1, if uh, the opponent anchors on the four point, it's still blocked by three points. Yes. So it's good to start doing that. And it also puts pressure on these blots here because white's got two blots here to worry about as well as the back checker. That's it. Yeah. Okay, good. Three, one. Okay, so. Had to so you see, white was so worried that they lifted their eight point checker. So. Instead, it, they've made it harder for them to make a four prime because of the pressure we've put them on. Right, right. Okay. Now another four three. Okay, so this one's interesting. It is. It's nice. 
What are the mm. options you're thinking of? Okay, so the first move that came to mind like instinctively was 24-21 and then 13-9. to Okay. And I was just trying to evaluate, is that the best option? Because obviously we're behind in the race. And this is kind of almost a race in play. Um, normally, you want to stay back for increased contact. So I was trying to think, is this the best play? But I think it is because of lack of other viable options. Anything else just makes us even more static because we'll be loading the six point or yeah. I don't I don't see we have a better play. Like than... this this maybe. Yeah, I what about what about hitting? The hit like this? I'd not seen the hit. Okay. Um I'd not seen it. Normally when I've only got a one point home board. I really don't see the value in hitting because we just can't contain the piece. Um, yeah, I know. I want to keep the anchor. You want um, to keep the anchor. So sometimes the way I evaluate things is, okay, so let's look at this position and see what we're trying to do and see what the opponents try to do and then look at an alternative play and and look at the look at the same kind of thing so you know as you obviously know there are four primary strategies to win without using the doubling cube there's the racing strategy there's a priming strategy there's a blitzing strategy and then the fourth is a defensive strategy like a holding game here right now as you mentioned we're down 20 pips in the race so we don't want a racing strategy, which means we kind of want to keep that goalkeeper back. And this kind of play doesn't do much. It does help bring an extra checker in the zone to allow for priming and blitzing. Um, but when you, and then, you know, if you're like this or something like that, white's going to try to escape. So this gives options for white to hit with eights and nines, which allows us, uh, which allows white to partially escape a checker and send another checker back gaining even more in the race um, when you do hit look at the race now it's only within six pips and despite the fact that uh, we're outboarded two to one there are other considerations that I kind of look at you know I'm not worried so much about being attacked here because there are only eight checkers into in the zone. Um, additionally, the hitting numbers like twos here are duplicated to hit here and enter here. So uh, we're not kind of too worried about that. Uh, so that's that's kind of what I think about. But if you'd like to uh, step up and bring one down, we could do that. Because, because we've got no home board, even though twos are duplicated, it would have to be like six two that becomes a problem because any other two, the opponent will come in and hit us on the 14. Um, most likely because we don't have a direct return shot on that point. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it could even hit us on the four. And then if we don't roll well, then yeah. Uh, the, the, I, I still feel like there's plenty contact available and that's why I'm not worried about going up to the 21 point. Um, I want to try and keep that last checker trapped if possible. So if that checker is yeah. unable to escape, yeah. I feel we've got a better chance of trapping it. If we get hit, that's not bad because that sends us back and we want to be back for more contact because we're behind. So to me, this place still works. Okay, so we'll do that and then we'll we'll take a look at it afterwards. 
three, two. Okay, so now we have a chance to attack. So yes. White's not scared of the attack. He actually stepped up into it. Five, two. So there, that's that's uh, we make that point. Yeah, okay. this is a, this is the kind of thing we were hoping for. Yeah, and six. Now, four. now we can get some momentum. I don't think we can cube yet, so we'll roll. Okay. What do you think before we play this four three? What do you think we would have to be changed about our position in order for it to be a double? Um. Maybe, maybe with the seven point made. So if we took one checker from the 21 and maybe one from the eight, um, yes, I'd, I'd be more happy with it, with doubling as blue. But yeah. right now we've still got a, a lot of work to do. Okay. I agree. We have a lot of work to do. So now the four, three. So I would play 13 to 10 and I would play 21 to 17 because that dupes fives now. Okay, I agree. Double three, uh-oh. That was a nice roll for XG. Now, five, three for us. So the three is forced and the five we've only got one choice of the five that's to hit okay if you were white right here would you double from the bar no not yet no i wouldn't I agree double three that helps more wow we might see a cube soon john yeah four one all right would you double as white here now Yeah, probably. Would you take if you were blue, which you are? Yes. Okay. Okay, so double? Yes, it's uh, we taking. Taking. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. That was a good roll. Double three for us. Okay, so. Here we have options. Yes, we do. I was reading a post on the forums yesterday or today about someone uh, saying doubles are hard to play. And I agree because there are more, more options and you kind of have to think about your priorities. Oftentimes doubles are played in pairs. Um, so sometimes I look at like, what are the pairs that I can use? What points can I make or what good things can I do? And then prioritize them. So what are all the options that can be done with one, three or two threes? Well, so we the uh, the only the only single threes we can play are twenty four twenty one or six three. Okay. All all the other threes work better in pairs. Okay. So we could play eight to five. Um, and we could play ten to seven. So whilst our prime isn't long, it's solid, it's unbroken. Um, another thing would be to just play 13 to seven. And then you give, you blocking everything except twos and sixes. So. And what about like making the five point and hitting and finding another three? These are difficult. I think the other three would have to be 13 to 10. Like this. 
What, what do you do, do you like this position? And if so, what do you like about it? Or if not, what do you not like about it? I I don't feel it's I feel it's too porous. Um one six two five two six three four three five three six. These are all numbers which can just come in and out. Yeah. Um it does duplicate the threes that enter and hit with the threes that cover on the other side. Um, that's true, but we, the 23 point is not very attractive to us because it's still very well blocked in by the seven and eight point. Okay, it would be nice because we send another checker back, but besides that, it's not really a position we're looking to occupy ourselves. Um, so if we're not going to hit, we're going to play them in pairs, right? Yes. So And I think the best pairs are 13 to 7. Like this. Yeah. So one of the things I like to do is see how the opponent's numbers play after we do either play. So, like, let's say we do this. Yes. The so sixes are pretty good. Pretty much any six is good. Even six one could hit or shift, but otherwise with a six, white's gonna come out, right? Yes. Okay, well what about fives? How do fives play? Like if he rolls like five four, five three, five two, five one, you can probably play off here or play off here. Um and what about the fours? Like four three, four two can be played off here, four one can be played elsewhere. Uh three two would cover. Four one, four one. You'll probably make the one point. Right, four one would make the point. Uh, three two. I, I, I feel like trying to counter prime is the best option we have. Yeah. So the 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 play which involved six to three is kind of a blitzing play, and I don't think we set up right. To, for for this for this play, not enough in the zone. So in no. terms of the priming play, there's also this option. So what they have in common is this. So what I like to do is kind of do this, and then think about the other twos. Um, so the benefit of this is, you know, having this point doesn't block anything immediately, right? A direct number. Uh, but this one blocks the fours, uh, right? So here, threes, fours, and fives are blocked as well as ones. Whereas here, ones, twos, threes, and fours. Um, so could run out with sixes, but look at what happens with six, four, for example. Six would come out and four something else. Or double five doesn't play so great. Um, no, it doesn't. The other advantage is now we have a three-point board um, against the three-point board, whereas here there's only a two-point board. So in the event of a potential hitting exchange, we would be an underdog. Um, also, we would have the best three-point board, the rack, as well as a solid four prime, as opposed to the porous prime or the gappy prime. Yeah. So this will be a good one to analyze. If you're happy, I'll go with the the solid rack. The solid like this? Yeah. Okay. I'm happy. I'm happy just to have you on. So the play doesn't <laughs> matter. <laughs> but I, I think the song's also a decent shot. Okay, let's see what happens. Five, four. Okay, so we still have a shot. The duplicated aces, though. Yes. Five. This will have to run from here. Yes. Okay. All right. So now, what are we trying to do? Um, we're trying to not lose a gallon. So what's the best? I mean, I guess the question is, do we step up with the three or do we not? No, no, I don't. We want to try and just be an inconvenience. Um, I'll, I would go 13 to 5. 
13 to 5. Yeah, it doesn't waste too many pips. And it's, it's putting us with some decent attacking options in the future if the opportunity arises. Right. I, I see that. The reason why I asked about this three is because if you're white and you're trying to win a gammon and you have a loose flat that you can hit with a uh, six four, double six, double five, even double ones and double twos, things like that, you try to go for it. Uh, it is nice to kind of maintain the contact. However, the other thing that I notice in this position is our anchor on the 21 point is six away from these two checkers on white's 10 point, our 15 point. And that's often, that makes it difficult to clear this point. Uh, right now, there's only a single gap, but white may roll something awkward to have to break one of these points. And this may prove to be relatively valuable in terms of contact. Um, and it'll probably lose fewer gammons here. And also the gammon value is higher here um, at this score. Like what I think about is say white wins a doubled gammon at this score, right? So white gets uh, to four zero, that's the Crawford game. If you're at the Crawford game, that's a valuable score because there's no cube. So I try to think of things like in that way, is it more important to save a gammon or less at the score? Um, and what are the options? So, but I think like either way, this is the five, right? Yes. So after after that discussion, which one would you prefer? And either way is okay with me. <laughs> well, I I still prefer my original my original. Okay. Um, I I I don't want to be so scared of losing the gammon that I give up on winning this game, and. I, I'm still I'm still hoping to try and win this game. Okay. So, yeah. so let's see. Okay. Three, two. Okay. So he did clear that. So now it's good that we're still back there, at least for now. So four, two. Um, thirteen to seven looks okay. Okay. If you're trying to, if you're considering trying to save a game, and this might be an option too. Yeah, but I, I don't I don't think we're in gammon save yet. White still got six checkers off the board. Yeah. The other thing is so like between thirteen seven, which is here, and the other play which I mentioned like this, they both have thirteen eleven in common, right? So now we're looking at the four, right? One play brings the eleven to the seven, which doesn't really create another active builder for these points. Um, neither does this, but at least it gets a crossover. So that was the thinking. Might not make too much of a difference, but well, the the other the other idea I had was ten to four, but um, that one definitely gives us more options to build with. Um. Yeah, I think I think we I think we can play ten to four. Ten to four, okay. Yeah, so we'll see. Yeah, okay. We'll see. Six one, okay. We're not hit. Now okay. six three. Okay. You see, now White's got a lot more checkers that they can attack the twenty four point with. Mm-hmm. Like uh, six one six four six five five four four one five one, so or double six. Yes. So so now we have a decent consideration if we abandon the one point or we don't. Um. Let's play the six because. That's that's the obvious one. And that six is 13 to seven. Okay. The other thing is if you were going to play the three here, you could also play the six out. But we, it would be unnecessary. We're not, we've got, 
three spares out, the 13 and the two on the seven, right. that we could keep that spare on the 21 in case we want to take a shot and we right, can take right, the right. shot. Without breaking without, the anchor. Yeah, yeah. So okay. if we did play 24, 21, I don't think we'd need to continue on with the six. Okay. I'm just not certain that. What well, if I asked you, if I consulted with you, is your preference to play 24 21 or can we play a three elsewhere? So the, the way I look at this again, we were talking about not losing a gammon, right? So it's, it, I kind of like to talk about it because it's, it's obvious, but sometimes it's good to kind of think about it this way. The way to win a gammon is of course, by bearing off all your checkers before the opponent bears off a single one. And the ways that you can do that is if you have a huge lead in the race, or if you put the opponent on the bar for long enough so the opponent cannot move while you're doing all that. And you mentioned all those numbers that can attack and point on head and give white that opportunity. So I feel like stepping up will save a lot of gamins for sure. And what will it do to our winning chances? Well, what is white going to do next? White's going to want to clear the eight point, right? So what are the roles that white cannot clear the eight point with? Anything with a four, right? So how do the fours play otherwise? Six, four can make the point. Five, four can make the point. Four, three is not great, but it can play safe. Four, two can clear this point and four, one can play here. So, and then threes are blocked from here. So how do the threes play? Six, three can be safely played here as will five, three, four, three can safely be played here. Three, one will clear here and three, two will clear here. So there are not a lot of awkward numbers for white next, but if we leave this here, there are a lot of good numbers. That's my thought process. No. There's there's more upside for white if we stay than downside if we stay. I I agree with that. So I mean sometimes put it put it a different way. If you're white in this position, would you prefer to have a blot that you should be shooting at or not? I guess I'd prefer it. Okay. What did White's worst role be? Double four play. There aren't there aren't a lot of bad roles for White. That's that's the that's the thing. No, there aren't. Maybe four three is awkward. Double threes. All right, let's 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 err on the side of caution. Um two two nulls not as bad as four null, that's for sure. All right. Okay. Five one. Okay. Two one. I guess you want to make the point or you want to get a crossover? I think now that we've decided to think of saving the gammon, um, I would just play two of the seven point. Okay. Five one. So the five. Um you want to take a crossover or keep this as a builder in case we get a sh three shot on a six three? That's a very good question. I would say let's just keep the seven point for now. So let's go oh, six. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now it's pretty much getting crossovers. Like. So that's a three and that's the one. Yeah. Same difference. Yeah. It's unlikely that we're going to get a shot with this kind of 4 1. Just go all the way. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Now we can probably afford to make that point, right? Yeah. Okay. Five one. We got the shot now. No, six five. So the six is forced, and I guess it doesn't make sense to stay there. No, there's not no reason to stay. We had our shots and we missed. So six five. Well, let's try that. Six three. All right, so we saved the gammon. Save the gammon, okay. All right. Now six one. So that's clear. Uh, point. Yeah. Okay, six two. Um, 13, 7, 24, 22. Yeah. I remember, I believe Mark Olson one time said, when you start with an opening 6-1 on your next roll, usually your sixes are going to come down 13 to 7. What a builder. Right. Okay, 6-5. So you could play like this or you can make the point on head. I think that's a little bit committal. Yeah, I'm happy to run 24. Okay. All right, stepping up. 5 1. 13 to 8, I think, is definite. Mm -hmm. And we kind of are ahead in the race, so 6 to 5 doesn't make too much sense. I like it that you're considering this play because obviously with this white can hit with ones, but ones are actually pretty valuable on the other side because white can make the five point with a three, one, four, one, or six, one, as well as the bar point with a four, one and unstacking the six point with a one is also very valuable. So that's good. On the other hand, if you step up here, now you see a six to escape. Um, Whereas they're the same number of builders that are pointing on here with an eight pip lead in the race. I think both are reasonable. Yeah, I think I think the um, stepping up 22 21 is the better play at the moment. Right. Okay. Four two. Oh, no. Can Four I change three. my mind? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, here's the three, and then the four, we can hit, or we can do something else. No, we're going to hit. Okay. Three, one, hit back. Uh-oh. Now. There's a long way to go in the game, so I don't think we can drop. Right. Like, I think White, not... White has the threat of winning a double gammon for the match with all these builders in the zone, but there's still some chances. Okay. So we yeah. take... Uh-oh. There might not be as long a way to go as we had thought. Yeah. Okay. What can we do when the bot rolls perfect dice? What can we do? Uh oh. All right, this looks like Gammon City. Oh, we may have a chance here. No. No, maybe now. No. No, I think that's it. We'll see if we can save the Gammon somehow. Nope. <laughs> The computer says no. No. Okay, so now we'll analyze it. Well played. 5.96. You had something to say about the dice. Nah, I'm, I'm, nah it's, it's fine. <laughs> uh, okay, oh, <laughs> let me um, share this other one too so we can look at it. Um, here. The 4-1, so this is the one we were looking at, the display? Yes. Yeah. 
Oh, that's actually not no, this no, one. This is the one you liked. Yeah, so six, this comes two, two out in, in fifth place. Yeah, um, so it's a decent error according to the computer. But I think the top two plays are, are reasonable. Like the four one, if the four is down, and then the one you can split here or you can slot there. Um, yeah, so thirteen nine is the common theme for the top plays. Right. Right. Um, okay. So let's let's keep going and see what's going on here. The uh, three two. Yep, yeah, I almost dissuaded you here, but looks like you got this one right. But they were close. Yeah. So this one. Okay. Good. And the four three. It was clear to anchor. We didn't want to make this point yet. No, not yet. This one. Yeah, this is the one we were talking about hitting. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Like yeah. I mean, let's see what it looks like afterwards. I mean, it does have all those things going for it. Uh, what we can do is change things here. So let's say White had a checker here, like that. Now, do you think hitting would be a little more dangerous? Yes, I do. Because rolls like double one, double three. Like yeah. now hitting is wrong. The, the the bot rolled a three two afterwards. Three, so two. what would be interesting is if we played the correct play uh, and then seeing what the bot would do with its three two, it would probably hit us on the four point with the three, I'm guessing. What would the bot do here? Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah, bar 22, 13, 11. Oh, no. Okay, so it would hit on the 11, which oh, would give here. us... Yeah, a, yeah, 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 because you could hit that. Which would give us another chance to anchor on the four, I guess. But but, but also four numbers that dance. And a lot of I, had sixes and fives, like six three, six two, six one, five three, five two, five one. And now And now the opponent will have nine checkers in the zone. Right, the extra checker in the zone makes a difference. So this this is kind of the scenario that was dissuading me from hitting because I, I felt like we're going into a fight and we outgunned. But with only eight checkers in the zone, we're not quite as outgunned as if there was an extra checker in the zone. So, okay. okay. So that's good learning experience. Okay, the five two was clear to make the point on head. Yeah, that's right. And the four three was right to to make the ten point and step out. Okay. So even though we were behind in the race, stepping up was correct. Well, I think after you make the ten point, there's not really a good four. And as no. you mentioned, it duplicates the fives and threes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then but we have not five. double three. <laughs> right, right, right. Obviously not the doubles. Uh, but then we had the five three. So the three was forced, and the eight uh, eight three for the five was pretty clear. And then we had two on the bar and a roll to four one. So that was forced, and then we got doubled. Um, so this was a take. There was another point that we were looking at, right? Where did we think it was a double? Remember, like, was it here? Or here? Um, here? Probably the 5 3, move 7. Um, no. I think you, here? for white, oh. you're like, you, you're like, if it was white's turn, would you double oh, here? Oh, yeah, yeah. But there was also one here, which is, which was not a double. Oh, here. What do you mean here? No, white would not double here. Right, right. White would not double here. Yeah, that's what we said. But white would double here. Yeah. And that's that's a take. But it's it's pretty strong. If we put it in here, and let's say white had made this point. Now you think it's a take? Yeah. 
I, I think I think it's still a take, but it's not a take I'd be happy with. But yeah, no. it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, but that that but. whole difference made a big difference in terms of the equity having that point. So I think um, in the original position, White does have threats of making this point, but there's the liability of having this blot as well as another checker back. But when you consolidate one of those liabilities, it makes it a pass. Let's see, like. Let's say this were escaped. Now what? Now I think it's still pass. Probably bigger, still a pass. A bigger pass, much bigger pass. It's almost too good to double. Mm. Okay. So that's good. Let's continue. This was the one that we were discussing, right? Yes. Yeah, 13 7. This is the one that, that we were thinking. I think it really likes that solid prime. And the other the other option was the this one. Making the five point hitting and then playing 10 to 7, which is a little bit more loose, but it does bring another um, checker to either uh, make the three point or make the seven point. But it did like making that solid prime like this. Yes, yes. I, I think we recognized whilst we're playing that this structure was the the most solid right uh, right the the other, the second best play we never even considered in our discussions um, right it, yeah but we did at least we discussed the 6 3 hitting yes yes okay so let's see then uh the 6 5 was clear to run and the 5 3 so this is the one where you didn't want to step up, but really like stepping up. So here's what happens. Um, if you step up, we're losing 10% gammons. If we stay back, it's 21%. That's correct. Yeah, so that's that's the reason. Let's see. So like you look at the gammon value. Uh, for white on a two cube, it's 0.655. Are you familiar with these numbers? No, no. So normally in a money game, the gammon value is 0.5. Uh, it basically tells you like the gammon price or how much it costs to lose a gammon or how much it gains you to win a gammon. For money, it's always 0.5 because um, it's a little complicated to discuss. But now it's worth more because as I said, uh, at five away, five away, um, you get to the Crawford game with a doubled gammon. If you change this to seven away, seven away, now it's about 0.5, it's closer to money. Um, at four away, four away, here, the gammon value is really high because you win the match perfectly with a doubled gammon. So that, that's kind of, it's a different way. This is a numerical way of thinking about what I was talking about. Um, so yeah, that makes sense now. But in, in this position, I, I still wasn't too worried about White's offense because White's got seven points. So as you can see, when we do run off, which was move 13, White's got so much more attacking. Yes. So, okay. I, I, um, this is like one of those where I understand what the bot's saying, but I just feel like in this moment, we we were not under too much threat, in my opinion. Whereas at that other point with the 6-3, we are. And that's why we decided to move up. So this is the dice distribution. So after we make this play... So now White's best roll is a double six here, which hits. Double five is played, ten, clearing these two points. Five four clears this point. It's just a lot, a lot of good rolls. Like you see all, all these, the equity for all of White's rolls. Right. On the other hand, if you, if we came like here. And now look at the same thing. They're not quite as high here. 
the average is 0.722, which should be about this, yeah. And then that's what, that's what XG is recognizing. Right, right. Um, okay. Okay. So that's that. Let's go to the next one. Then there was 4-2. It looks like these were close, making the two-point. That loses a few more gammons. So the 6-3, yeah, it looks like it was mandatory to step up here because of what we were talking, the additional firepower. Yes. Okay. Then the 2-1, these were all close. Didn't matter. 5-1. I think you just continue. It even liked four three, but these are small things, no big deal. Let's see where we made this one with a four two. Wow, it likes running all the way. Yeah. What's I, I, that? yeah. What's the advantage of running all the way over not? Okay, so let's look. This one, when it loses 12.3% gammons, this one loses 18.8% gammons. If you stay, white's bad rolls are 4 1, 5 1, and 6 1. If if you play like if you if you play like this. 4 1, 5 1, and 6 1 get us a shot, right? Yes. If you play like this, those same numbers get us a shot, but we're further ahead. You know, we've gotten more uh, away. Okay. Uh, because if we're hit, we, we have more numbers to hit. So, like, if he hits with, like, a 6-1 or a 5-1, or maybe he's not supposed to hit, just 6-1 or 5-1, bears off a checker and moves one here. Uh, leaves fewer shots. At least we're closer to home. That's that saves more gammons. I think that was the consideration there. Um, okay. So then the six five was just to run, and then that was pretty pretty much it for that game. So let's continue to the next game. Uh, the six one was of course clear, and the six two as well. Okay. So this was the one we were talking about. The six five. Yeah, it wants us to make the one point. One of the things that I look at is, let's say we make the one point here. And let's say we run. Let's say we run and white rolls a 6-1. How does that play for white? It makes the bar point. How does 6-1 look for white from here? Um, it's good for us. Yeah. What about if white rolls 6-5? What is what about six five from here? It's not that good for the bot. Six, well, no. Well, six five can point on head for white. If white rolls a six five here, oh uh, yeah, point on head. Six three can point on head. Five three can point on head. But after here, those numbers do not. Mm. So it's just the, the tempo play of taking away half the roll, even though it does make that deep point. Sometimes it works out. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when um, the opponent, when you have like, you start with checkers on the six and the eight. When you add a checker on the nine point, that produces many more good offensive roles. And when you have two checkers on the nine point, you have that and so much more because you have a 10th checker in the zone for attacking. So uh, I think you're just trying to prevent white from attacking here. It, it's tempting to think, oh, let's just try and get one checker to safety, right? And then, and then we've only got to worry about the the other one. But um, what if it were? Well, I guess like this, uh, you would make the anchor. Yeah, like that, you'd make the anchor. Like here, they, maybe you run all the way with the twenty-one there. No, still, but it's better. Let's see. Yeah, it's it's closer. 
if you're over here now you can run and uh that's pretty good let's see this still still it likes that no even it's, further well because now the ones the ones are really good here here rolling like a five one four one three one two one will we'll hit uh loose whereas after here now a three one four one and a double one will make the point whereas after this it would hit loose and you get a shot and you'd have another one back those are hard to find all right so let's go uh next one was five one and this was this was correct yeah the slotting play was an overplay given that we were so ahead in the race no oh, that would have been oh, a no big... look at that it looks better well let's look at this one let's do plus plus on both of them. oh yeah 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 that, okay. would, that would that would have ruined our pr <laughs> <laughs> ruined it more uh um, yeah. okay so here the three was forced and the four we hit and then we danced and then it was the double yeah this wow, is a pass. borderline pass let's see what it looks like plus plus so it's not a big 22 okay it's not a big error to take this one i guess it's just that let's see like white's winning 73% of the time and 28% gammons, which win the match. So that's yeah. quite valuable. Again, the uh gammon value on a two cube is a little bit elevated for white, 571, because you win the match with only one point of overage. Um, okay. So then there was the three three, which was bad, and we couldn't really do anything after that, right? Yep. 22. We in. we were passengers on a runaway train <laughs> to Louisville, <laughs> and that was that was about it. Okay, so we lost the game, and, but the most important thing uh, is we had fun. We um, had a lot of fun, and um, I, I will take lessons from that six five. Um, that's a about, good one. About not not being too keen to run when we can hit and take away half the roll and all those numbers that we take away from your opponent yeah one of the one of the things i've learned from doing this whole dice distribution thing that i do frequently is it helps me think about the upcoming sequences one of the things i've learned is uh, like in life in backgammon you don't know what's going to happen next. Of course, there are 36 possibilities and 21 unique ones. And in the next two rolls, there are 1,296 or 441. So there are many possibilities. So considering at least the next 21 possibilities uh, helps you kind of think about what are the possible variations and uh, trying to maximize your equity on the most common variations. So mm -hmm. I feel like that helps. And then especially when you're hitting and you put someone on the bar, I, I feel like in those cases, it's really easy to see how numbers play. So if you made the six point and the one point, obviously there are four dancing numbers, which would otherwise be good. Um, and then you look at how the other sixes play, like a six, five, six, four, six, three, and six, two. And you look at how the other ones play, like the five, one, four, one, three, one, and two, one. And then just looking at those and thinking about them after each play, help me kind of see what's what's going to happen mm -hmm. and uh, play better prepared for those kinds of eventualities right right I, I feel like um you have to have contingency is one of the things i learned um, from one of bill roberti's books is the concept of non-commitment um although it is a committal play um it gives multiple different options you know, in case the opponent dances. Um, there's there's almost no bigger committal play than putting two checkers on the ace point early on because right. that's, that's it. They're there for the rest of the game now. Yeah. And then sometimes just the tempo is important, so it makes it worth it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, no, our, our, we we were not in great shape because XG had made the nine point, and yeah, it, it caused us a bit of a hassle to try and get out, and yeah, but we had we had a chance if we'd rolled a one in the first game, we could have hit. Yeah, um, but we missed, so yeah. it happens. Okay, well, it's it was fun as always. Uh, we we played we played a five point match in the same length of time. Some people have played a three point match. <laughs> uh, we, we managed to do it. Some sometimes I, I try to do things to kind of uh, get it within an hour or so, like move things along faster, ask more or fewer questions. Uh, yeah, but, but it worked. So uh, yeah. thank you very much. It's always a pleasure thank to play with you. Uh, do you thank, have any other thank comments? You. Um, no, thank you for tonight. I enjoyed it. Um, and I'll see you, see you in the group sometime. Yeah, see you soon. Okay, thank you so much to John. It's always a pleasure to have you. Um, I always have a lot of fun. Thank you to the viewers for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. Again, my book, Backgammon and Backgammon Strategies is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in the lessons, please contact me via email. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. And until then, keep rolling your dice.